So how do you become a cardiologist? I get this question a lot. I'm Dr. Al, I'm a board certified cardiologist. So first of all, you gotta get through high school, obviously. You gotta apply to college and go to college, clearly. Now, it doesn't matter what your college degree is. Mine was economics and finance. I just loved business. I love the stock market. I loved in you know trading stocks. So my undergrad degree was economics and it was not biology. However, you do have to take the uh, prerequisites for medical school. That'd be like biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, and physics. I don't know if that's changed now. This is like many, many years ago. You apply to medical school, you take a test called the MCAT. You have to score highly on it. You have to have a good science GPA, usually over 3.5 or you know above 3.3, something like that, maybe 3.75. Depending on the schools you plan to apply to, you need a really good science GPA, a really good MCAT score, that gets you through the door. Then all the extracurricular stuff matters. You need to get your foot in the door first. Um, then in the interviews, you get asked about your extracurriculars. So generally most medical schools have a algorithm. They plug your grades into this giant algorithm because they get like three to 7,000 applicants for maybe 200 spots, sometimes only 80 spots, depending on the size of the school. And I've been on admissions committees uh, at my medical school. And the people we interview are the ones that made it past the algorithm. And then we look at your personal statement and your extracurriculars and all that. And then we start interviewing you. Now I will recommend do not put your GPAs on your personal statement or on your CV or your resume. A lot of medical schools have a blind uh, interview process where we have no idea what your grades are. All we have in front of us is your personal statement and your CV, mainly so that we can ask you questions like, oh, hey, it says here you're, uh, you like reading books. What was the last book you read? Oh, it says you like running. Do you run to relieve stress or what have you? So make sure your CV is blinded without your grades on it. If they want you to have, if the admissions committee has your grades, then they have your grades. They print off your transcript and they hand it to us. But most med schools, I would say, now are blinded. So we do not have your grades, so don't give them to us. You don't want to prejudice the interviewers because some people clearly will be like, oh, this person has a low GPA. They're probably not as good. You want your personality to shine in these interviews. Maybe I'll do a whole video on that, but you want to be a good communicator. You want to talk. You want to answer questions. You want to be the kind of person somebody would love to talk to because we're looking at like your interactions. How are you going to interact with patients and their family members, your colleagues, you know, other people that work with you on different projects and research, you know, groups or whatever. So definitely just be your bubbly, happy, you know, happy go lucky self. Talk to us about anything and everything. The last thing that I liked, the last thing that I wanted during a interview of possible medical students was like, you ask them a question like, hey, you know, uh, turns out you like underwater basket weaving. Tell me a little bit about that. You enjoy that? And they just look at you and they're like, yes. Like, no, no, that's not going to help. So please just talk about things that you're excited about. Show some emotion, show some personality. We do not like robots, so do that. Now, let's say you get into medical school. You go through your first two years, which is mostly classroom work. Your second two years is when you try out all the different specialties. You try surgery, internal medicine, gynecology, psychiatry, ophthalmology, whatever. You try all the different medi you know, residencies or specialties, and then you kind of got to decide where you want to go. Usually after that first year, you start applying to various specialties. One major decision point is surgical versus non-surgical. Are you a cutter or a non-cutter? Are you going to go down a surgical path like general surgery, brain surgery, neurosurgery, gynecology, something that's surgical, urology, or are you going to go down something medical like maybe family medicine, internal medicine, cardiology, GI, what have you? These are considered non-surgical. So you got to decide at some point, are you going to be a surgical type specialty or a medical type specialty? We usually call those surgery versus medicine. You have to decide that at some point. So if you want to be a cardiologist, you would choose internal medicine, which although we are not you know, officially surgeons, yes, your medical degree just does say physician and surgeon. We are not quote unquote surgical, but we do a lot of procedures that involve cutting people open, putting in pacemakers and, you know, those kind of things. So still, we still do procedures. We do lots of cool valve replacements now, you know, through, uh, you know, catheters and small little incisions. And we don't do like the split you open, open heart surgery. That would be a cardiothoracic surgeon that went down the surgery route. But through little tiny catheters and wires and stuff, we can do a lot of stuff to your heart that does not require uh, open heart uh, surgery. So it's really, really fascinating. There's all kinds of stuff we do. I really love cardiology because first of all, you can treat people medically by putting them on medications, by putting them on medications. 
You can treat them electrically with pacemakers, ablations, things like that. You can do minor procedures like cardiac catheterizations, pericardiocentesis. Pericardiocentesis when like somebody has a lot of fluid around their heart, you stick a needle in just under their ribs and take the fluid out. You look at imaging, you read cardiac MRIs, cardiac CT scans, echocardiography, you know, ultrasound. You read every kind of imaging basically you can imagine, CT, ultrasound, MRI. And also, what else do we do? We look at EKG tracings. You know, we look at the kind of the electrical system and how your heart's doing electrically. We counsel patients, we counsel their family members. We do all kinds of really, really neat stuff. Can the lifestyle be hard? Yeah, especially if you're interventional. You might have to come in the middle of the night and open up a, uh, a plugged up artery. Absolutely, it can be difficult. But a general cardiologist that does a little bit of everything that is not interventional, but they are invasive, generally won't be called in in the middle of the night to do those kind of things. We may be called in for other things, but generally we're not called in for like the balloons and stents that are needed, you know, for somebody who's having a massive heart attack. Um, so you would apply, you'd get into internal medicine residency, which is three years. So this is after med school. Med school is, college is four years. Med school is four years. Internal medicine is three years. Cardiology fellowship is three years. If you finish those three years, you are a general cardiologist. You can apply to subspecialties of cardiology. You can do interventional. You can do electrophysiology. You can do imaging. You can do heart failure, advanced heart failure. You can do structural. All of these are generally an additional year or two. And uh, some people will do those because they want to specialize further. So that's about how you become a cardiologist. I absolutely love my job. I think it's the most fascinating, evolving field in the world. There's the most research dollars behind this field because it's still one of the, it's either the number one killer or, you know, soon to be supplanted by cancer. You know, that's how good we're getting at treating some of this stuff. But generally speaking, it's a fantastic job. I'm also a certified personal trainer. I'm super passionate about cholesterol as well. All of those things mesh together really, really well. I hope this is helpful. If you like it, share it with some people that are trying to learn how to be an awesome cardiologist.